What's going on, guys? Waco from Revolution here with my buddy Rene Guimont, who Hi, is the head of watches for Europe and also the man behind this momentous occasion. This is the art of Epigeon. It's the first thematic auction dedicated to a living watchmaker. It's so exciting. But first of all, how are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me in Singapore. Uh, thank you for gracing our island nation. <laughs> and thank you for bringing such extraordinary horological riches as we have assembled here. But you know, let me ask you this first. It is this first auction for a living watchmaker. Why Fonso Paul Joy? Look, you know, um, we were all at Christie's extremely excited, you know, to have the opportunity to uh, curate, you know, and to uh, offer watches of FP Jouan to the public. Um, the great thing about Christie's is that, you know, we're an auction house that's really international and that has a diversity of collectors, you know, people that collect art, people that collect jewelry, watches, just about everything. So we really wanted to offer something different, you know, to our clientele and to be able, you know, to um, put François Paul Journe, you know, to the forefront, really, and highlight the quality and the importance of his work to the broader public. So it, it was really that, you know, that pushed us to, to do this, uh, this initiative. Well, that's wonderful. You know, it's funny because I think for watch nerds like myself, and I would imagine for you as well, it's almost like we've been waiting two centuries for the next um, Abraham Louis Brigade to grace mm. the earth, right? And when I think about someone whose canon of work, you know, um, really represents like watchmaking in the truest and most authentic form, that's continuing the incredible work of the rock stars of the 18th century, mm -hmm. like Alti Janvier, who's François Paul's hero, like Abraham Louis Breguet, like Harrison, you know, guys who are trying to figure out how to make chron chronometric performance that much better mm -hmm. to serve the needs of humanity. It's François Paul who's really continuing this work. Um, would you agree? And what about independent watchmaking appeals to you so much? I 100% agree, uh, you know, when you see the, the wristwatch that he created, you know, and uh, the complication as well that he's been able to adapt to wristwatches or it, it's just amazing, you know, to see the work that he's done and, uh, you know, to, to pull him, you know, to actually, you know, add bricks to the wall of watchmaking. Um, and in, in terms of independent watchmaking, you know, to, to the, the broader perspective, basically, I think it's the fact that something really, you know, um, uh, all about you know the watchmaker, uh, about his ability to create, to innovate. Um, there's also you know some some kind of feel you know for his earlier uh, creations that you know you have something that's really handmade. You know you can visualize FP you know sitting at his desk you know working on the movement, working on the watch, and that I think is amazing for people who collect wristwatches to you know be able to understand what a watchmaker is about, be able to meet him, be about, you know, be able to discuss ideas with him, to, uh, you know, just f follow his evolution as well. Uh, in the end, you know, he, he, another great thing about this auction is that it's the first auction of a living watchmaker. Uh, and I think that just makes it really tremendous for collectors of, uh, of watches in general. Incredible. And, you know, and the watches that you're, you're offering, they represent some of the most historically important pieces, I would say, of all time. So let's start with the watch that everyone has kind of lost their mind over. It's, it's <laughs> subscription piece number two of his, um, you know, uh, uh, Tourbillon Souverain. And it is a watch that is incredibly important from a watchmaking perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, a Tourbillon, which was created for a pocket watch, of course, was meant to compensate, you know, for errors by gravity uh, when a watch was in the vertical position. And does it actually have any uh, raison d'etre in a wristwatch? It's an interesting question, right? Exactly, yeah, for sure. One thing that we know is that, you know, as power reserve diminishes, because the tourbillon is so much heavier than a normal sort of balance wheel and skatement, it actually amplifies the diminishment of torque. And François Paul has always likened this to like a little boy carrying a backpack, <laughs> of walking up a, a staircase. <laughs> and with a tourbillon, it's like putting rocks in his backpack, right? Exactly. So uh, what he's, he wanted to do is take the Remont Trois d'Egalité, which is a, a device that has its own power source and that rearms itself every one second and uses that to drive the tourbillon, thereby eliminating its dependence on the mainspring. I mean, it's G right yeah it's really amazing it's, it's the first time that it was actually fitted on a wristwatch yeah so uh, it, it's amazing and you know to 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 go to the wristwatch directly we were extremely honored you know to be able to have it and it's it's amazing that we have comprehensive his you know comprehensive representation of F. Jones work right uh, from you know his earliest pieces with 
uh, the, the start of his uh, innovations and of you know the appliance, for example, of the Remontoir d'Egalité on Tourbillon to some some later production watches. Yeah, and, but you know this piece in particular is incredible because it's one of the watches he built his brand with, right? Mm. I mean, it, it, so you know there was François Paul. He had made, um, I, b I believe, a Remontoir d'Egalité Tourbillon pocket watch for a famous collector called Eugene Schwinn. Mm. Then he was like, you know what? I think this would be an awesome wristwatch. But the problem was, like, you showed it to people and no one understood it. Yeah. Right? I think the Different only time. guy that understood it, according to our buddy Osama, uh, otherwise known as the Jorn guy, was Gunder Blumlein, mm. you know, who saw it and said, you know, I like this. Potentially, I could use this for IWC. Yeah. But in the end, uh, it, he, he didn't follow up with that. So François Paul was trying to get this watch to be accepted by a brand until he realized, you know what? I should just make it for myself. <laughs> But then he had a problem. In order to start his own brand, he didn't have adequate capital. Financing. Right? And there's this uh, famous lunch that he had with uh, Camille Berthe, yeah. yeah, a friend of his who said, well, you should do what Breguet used to do back in the day. Exactly, subscription method. Exactly, and this is one of those 20 watches. How significant is that from a exactly. historical perspective for you? Extremely important. As you just mentioned, it actually shows, you know, the birth of F.P. Journe as a brand. And on top of that, it's, you know, actually the second watch that he ever commercialized. Wow. And when you think about it as well, the great story, because we, you know, when we were discussing with F.P. Jorn about the, the, the watches that we have in the auction, quick anecdote he gave me, it's actually the same person that bought the number one that was allocated the number two. No way. As he was basically advancing, you know, the, the funds for one of his friends who really wanted, he really wanted one of his friends to be involved in F.P. Jean. Incredible. Know? So yeah, so a, a lot of little fun stories. But, uh, and then when you have the watch on, on your wrist as you do or in your hands, you can really feel, you know, the, the handmade aspect of this wristwatch, so. I mean, by the man, hand of the creator. You know, exactly. what, what's so cool about this watch? And which, you know, I only learned later was that Fonso Paul starts with the design of the dial first. Yeah. You know, I mean, how, what kind of genius are you? That's that, it. That you're like, <laughs> I like the way this looks, then yeah. I'll create a movement to fit it, you know? But it, I love it, the it, symmetry. For sure. And imagine the amount of, you know, how complex this is, you know? Uh, he, he, he definitely isn't afraid, you know, to undertake challenges. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and this beautiful sort of like arrangement that you have, you know, um, at three o'clock, you've got the sub dial for hour and minute, mm. which actually is cool because you can kind of discreetly check the time as That's well, it. Right? <laughs> and then if you decide to pull your sleep further back, you reveal this extraordinary tourbillon. That's it. And then at six o'clock, you have the remontoire mm. d'égalité. And then if you turn it on the back, you've got the flat bladed spring that's driving it. Mm. I mean, it's perfect in execution. For sure. Brass movement yeah. as well, you know, platinum case. But to imagine that, that this watch was created by the man himself. That's it. Dude, exactly. that's, that's nuts, For right? sure, for sure. Remy, if, 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 can I put you on the spot and, and, and what do you think this watch will go for? Look, you know, um, I really want to see the watch exceed 3 million Swiss franc. Right. Uh, that's really what we want. So, you know, and uh, we have a lot of people that are uh, you know, looking at the wristwatch and that are interested. So uh, I'm looking forward to to see what the market says. Incredible. You know, you said something really interesting to me. You feel as if that the Jorn watches and the Jorn collectors, they're like the opposite of what we experience with like hype watches, mm. right? Watches that were being used basically as uh, speculative instruments. Jorn connoisseurs and collectors are there because of their genuine love for watchmaking. And you have for to be sure. educated to understand this exactly. as well. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's true. Incredible. Okay, so let's go from that to an incredible pre-subscription chronometre resonance. Okay. So tell me about this watch. Um, amazing wristwatch. Uh, you know, the resonance, again, you know, um, it really speaks uh, F.P. Journe, uh, the creativity, the, to, the, to have the idea as well, to apply the resonance complication, you know, to a phenomenon, to a, a wristwatch. Uh, you know, he was the first one to ever do this. And uh, again, an, a very early watch. It was uh, created in the year 2000. So, wow. it, you know, it kind of replicates the effect that you, you mentioned on the subscription uh, tourbillon. Uh, you really have the opportunity to have something that was at the beginning of the FP Jouan brand. Right. And, uh, you know, how, how representative is this? You know, right. when you speak about FP Jouan, you instantly think of the resonance. So, dude, this thing is insane to look at. And, okay, guys. This is why François Paul Jorn is the greatest watchmaker of our era. So the phenomenon of resonance was identified by Christian Huygens, right? Mm. And he was like, dude, if you notice something, if you put two pendules like, uh, uh, that are um, oscillating, they will enter it either out of phase or in phase, right? Exactly. So it precisely the, 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 the you know, a uh, synchronized yeah. kind of like beat. 
Um, and what was interesting was the brigade then created a sympathetic clock, which was using pendules that were out of phase in opposite directions. And then it was on Team Janvier that actually did a pendule clock where the pendules were actually in phase as well, who's Francois Paul's hero. So Francois Paul is like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna put this in a wristwatch. But it was a struggle. Like it took him years to get, sure. you know? Yeah. And 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 this incredible harmonic frequency where energy is dissipated, but it and, and, and it enters through the base plate of the watch, but also there's something to do with the proximity of the balances. I mean, there's a theoretical uh, uh, physics conversation there that I'm under equipped to talk exactly. about, but it, <laughs> it's so cool, right? Yeah, you see them 100%. enter exactly into synchronicity. And of course, it is like the uh, tourbillon. It's a brass movement, of which is uh, yeah. a demonstrative of an early Jorn watch. But the, tell me what a pre-subscription watch is. Pre-subscription watch is basically uh, a wrist watch, which uh, was done, you know, kind of in the same era than the subscription tourbillon. Right. However, it wasn't necessarily allocated to one of the uh, subscriptor. Ah, okay. You know? So yes, so I you could have something of the same era. With, right. However, it's not numbered, you know, between zero or twenty. Right. I think uh, Osama, the Jean guy, yeah. was, was saying that, you know, Francois Paul, he's a very uh, loyal person and he, his friendships are very meaningful to him. 100%. So the 20 guys that had the Tourbillon subscription, he was like, okay, I want these 20 guys to also have the resonance. Yeah. But that took some time for that to sort mm -hmm. of get organized. In the interim, they created these 21 pre subscription watches which are also identifiable by the fact that they have the shallow engraving on the case back. Again, yeah. I mean. Big, amazing detail, for sure. And, and probably made by the hands of, of the, the master. master right? <laughs> I mean, dude. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you hope that this watch will achieve. We will see. Uh, you know, uh, again, um, with all the work that we're doing, you know, we're really trying to make sure that the auction, you know, speaks to a lot of different people and uh, also to make the format, you know, a bit um, uh, something different, you right. know, a bit innovative. So, um, you know, uh, it's a watch that could definitely fetch, you know, uh, upwards of uh, 800,000. Incredible. And, and $800,000, honestly, it's, it's to me, yeah, very good value. For you something know? so iconic, exactly. exactly. And that actually is part of the extremely early production pieces of FP. Incredible. Anyway. So let's go from that to a watch that I know you love. <laughs> it's a Cenograph, which is François Paul's 1 100th of a second chronograph, but a very special one. Tell yeah. me a little bit about this. Extremely special. Uh, it's a watch that was uh, born, you know, from uh, the, the friendship of F.P. Jaune and uh, Jean Todd, who at the time was the, the, the CEO of uh, Ferrari. Uh, and before that, actually, he was uh, the team principal of uh, the Scuderia Ferrari from Formula One and won, you know, many titles with Michael Schumacher. Um, so, you know, they had the idea to develop, um, you know, a centigraph that could uh, increase the accuracy of just a simple chronograph and uh, be able also, you know, to uh, uh, accurately monitor times up to a hundredth of a second. Yes. Um, and yeah, this is a, a, a very special watch of the of, of the Centigraph as it's, it really represents, you know, the, the 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 kind of partnership that these two had, you know, when they thought about, you know, uh, the, the Centigraph. And then uh, it also represents, you know, the colors of Ferrari, the the, the red paint, you know, with the yellow uh, hands, which were actually delivered, you know, Jean Todd sent paint to Francois Paul Journe in order for him to actually correctly match the color scheme of So it's actually uh, Ferrari. Ferrari paint. So it's actually Ferrari paint. Incredible. And uh, uh, an anecdote actually that uh, Francois Paul told me is that, uh, you know, when he thought of the dial, you know, and, and, and created the dial, he thought, okay, you know, there's a chance that this watch, you know, works with collectors and that collectors actually really enjoy it, you know. How will I prepare to, you know, this demand, knowing that I have only very limited amount of paints? Right. So he had the idea, you know, to sell the watch automatically with uh, the platinum bracelet, which came, you know, at a at a premium. <laughs> My memory is correct; it was around fifty thousand Swiss francs. So to have this Ferrari Sandigraph, you had to have the platinum bracelet. Right. Yeah. May I? Of course. So, you know, from, again, a watch nerd perspective, when you see the Cenograph, you're just like, dude, my mind is blown, right? I mean, Francois Paul has always said he wanted to be able to time everything from someone taking a slow stroll after lunch, especially at lunch with him, because you yeah. have wine, you know? <laughs> so six kilometers an hour to 36,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. which is like the, the speed of a rocket being launched, right? 
So what he did was he created three subdials, one that times 1 100th of a second, another that does 20 second increments, and the third that does 10 minute increments as well. But what's super interesting about this watch is it's like oscillators are only vibrating at three hertz. How do you get 1 100th of a second? What's incredible about this watch is the chronograph is actually being driven by the barrel. Mm. And you have a barrel which is like, which is powering both the time, the timekeeping train, but also the chronograph train as well, separately, and actually from two sides as well, right? From the exterior of the, bar of the mm. barrel and also from the interior too, which is actually technology he derived from the Sonnery Souverain, you know? So yeah. to see that level of watchmaking placed into a chronograph is brilliant. Then he's got this rocker button as well, exactly. which completely you know allows you to, to use it in such an intuitive way. And the watch is just absolutely stunning to behold. So that's an incredible watch also. Now, Remy, we have two more tourbillons here, just because yep. we also wanted to see some of the artistic craft that's also associated with the tourbillon souverain. We have a J-Dal watch mm -hmm. and a Regency watch. Tell us a exactly. little bit about these two timepieces, please. Um, more contemporary productions. Um, the J tourbillon uh, is something you know that's uh, really mesmerizing. Uh, you know when you think that in order to make sure that you know the J dial is the way it is, they thought about you know a way of actually reuniting two plates of jade right. in order you know for, uh, for for them to fit you know on the dial that's completely asymmetrical. Um, and for it not to not to break, actually. Exactly. Uh, you know, we, we all know that uh, hard stone dials are actually very fragile. So, um, you know, it, it was a, a nice tactic for them to to be able to manufacture the way it is, the watch the way it is. Stunning. And and Remy, how how rare is this watch? It's it's really rare. Uh, for you know, uh, F. P. Jean being F. P. Jean, you know, he he won't tell you exactly, you know, uh, how rare the watch can be, but uh, it's only a handful of watches right. that's genuinely like exactly under a handful, only, exactly right under a handful of watches right. that have been in the. That's incredible. Yeah. And tell us about this watch with this beautiful engraving on it as well, the Regency. The Regency, Pingol Tourbillon, and it actually again, you know, showed the the artistic approach that F. P. Jean takes, you know, to his dials and to his wristwatches. Um, that's stunning. Absolutely stunning, and it's the first at auction for us. So we're extremely happy, you know, that the watch is part of the of the collection. That's amazing. Mm. You know, it's really funny also because in preparation for this auction, you and François Paul had a discovery about pink gold watches. Hey, tell yeah, you, no, tell us course. a little bit about that. So you know, we were just um, you know br browsing through the selection of watches, and you know, there are some pieces where, we, for example, an Octa Reserve de Marche, where you think, okay, you know, this is something I've, I've seen. You know, this is something that's um, you know, that have, ha, has been seen already, but, you know, what people don't necessarily realize is that an Octa Reserve de Marche in pink gold is actually much more rare than an Octa Reserve de Marche in platinum. And that's because at the time, you know, it's actually coming from François Paul, uh, people were, everyone wanted a platinum case, right. you know? So inevitably, the, because of the price difference was very small. I think it was like just, just over 3,000 exactly. francs, which is, if you think about it, that's crazy. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. So in the end, you know, the, 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 what happened was that inevitably the pink gold cases are now seen as much rarer right. than the platinum cases. Well, that's amazing. So, okay, this concludes our discussion about the chronometric excellence and achievement of François Paul Jorn. But let's talk about a set of watches which are spectacular and demonstrate his artistic soul. Mm -hmm. And through the magic of editing, the watches have <laughs> appeared in front of us, Remy. Special watches. Yes, as if like the gods of watches have, have bestowed them upon us. Now, Remy, we've talked a lot about the chronometric achievement, right? We talked about the tourbillon with the remontoire d'égalité. We talked about the chronometre résonance. Yeah. But talk to me a little bit about the vagabondage and why this is such an appealing watch to you and how unique it is to have a triptych of these watches. Yeah, well, um, you know, at the time, uh, François Paul was, François Paul Jaune was actually uh, working, you know, with uh, a, a lot of watchmakers. And um, at some point he wanted to create, uh, a, a, the case of the Vagabondage was actually initially devised for a Tortue uh, wristwatch of Cartier. Wow. Um, and, you know, it's something that never came through. Yes. Uh, so, but, you know, in the year uh, 2006, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
Anticorum, Osvaldo Patrizzi, uh, you know, went to FP Journe and told him actually for the anniversary of my auction house, would you be able, you know, to create something special? And, uh, you know, he, he didn't have much time, you know, to, to create an entirely new watch, you know, so he went in his, uh, in his atelier, found the case of uh, the, the previous project that he had been working on at the time and devised, you know, this wristwatch with something, you know, completely new, you know, to, to him, uh, Urso Tant, uh, you know, the, the case that, you know, hasn't necessarily been, uh, has, had been used ever, you know, in his manufacturer and also, you know, you don't have his name, F.P. on the dial. <laughs> Another little detail. Absolutely. You know, the watch is just so charming for me in that it transforms time into a poetic language, yeah. you know? And as you were saying, uh, Francois Paul and the company he created called Tia Shah mm. was doing a lot of work for Cartier. Mm. They, they, they developed the Mono Pusher chronograph, for example, right? Uh, the Tortu CPC yeah, Mono Pusher chronograph back in the day. So this is an incredible watch that they had developed, and in the end, it didn't become part of that. And yeah. it's so entertaining to me that Oswaldo Patrizzi went to visit him and he's like, bro, I have this auction and it's in six months. And it's like, I, I, the question would be like, dude, why didn't you answer two years ago? For sure. You know, but it's, uh, they had this auction to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Anticorum, as you were saying, and Fonso Paul took this out of his um, drawer and, and, and history was born, right? Exactly. So they had three pieces there, one in each a color of gold. Yep which were sold at auction. Mm. So, and then, then, then he felt compelled, like, so all the collectors were like, dude, what about us, <laughs> right? And so he felt compelled because he loves his collector to create this watch, which was the Vago Banoj one in a platinum case in how many pieces? 69. And if you're one of those lucky guys, <laughs> you have something quite extraordinary. For sure. Now, talk to me because then, you know, uh, he progressed to create Vago Banoj two, mm. which took the idea of our artistic expression of time to the next level. You know, at this time we'd had some digital watches emerge. Well, Opus 3 emerged, but it didn't come out yeah, for like, yeah. <laughs> like another 10 years. Um, talk to me about Bagomadash 2 and why you think this watch is so cool with its jumping hour and minute indicator. That's it. Uh, you know, uh, open dial, um, you know, jumping hours, jumping minutes. And uh, uh, again, you know, it's, it pushes the Vagabondage series to a new level, um, you know, which was. Uh, uh, something very I iconic, you know, to the, to, to, to for Jean Collector. So I love this watch, but I think the most insane Vagabondage of all time, it's gotta be Vagabondage 3, mm. because he then added to that <laughs> jumping, jumping seconds, seconds, which is exactly. nuts, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's so <laughs> stunning to see it going through its paces. What an incredible watch. So and they're all the same serial number. So that's the thing, right? Because the watches were sold separately. Exactly. Right? So someone, who loved Fonso Paul, mm. loved his watches, who had the means to acquire all three of these watches in this incredible triptych. Like, how meaningful is that? Uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing for uh, FP Jean. It's amazing to see, you know, that for, for collectors as well, that you have people, you know, who, who have been following uh, the manufacturer for so many years and, you know, have had also the, the, the possibility to acquire the different timepieces. And, it also shows FP Jean's loyalty to his customers as well. You know, Absolutely. to be able for him to say, okay, you know, I give you the same serial number. Yes. So, well, you know. Well, it was it was hilarious because um, when he launched Vagabondage, the rose gold version of yeah. Vagabondage 1, he, he said, okay, I'm going to give preference to allocation of these watches with people with full sets. Mm. And then they even created a, a, a <laughs> mini site mm. where people could go and trade watches so that they all had the, the, the right Amazing. numbers. Yeah. You know? Uh, and that is something that I love about the cult of collectability of Jorn. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the ups and downs of watch collecting and, and of, of like, I guess, collecting in general. Mm. First thing I would say is that following the crypto crash of last year, you know, now we have some challenges uh, economically and otherwise, certainly, you know, politically as well. Um, there has been some uncertainty in the market for the last six months. Yet, incredibly enough, the one brand that seems to be not only immune, but actually going up in value yeah. is Francois Paul Jean. Sure. Remy, why? Um, you know, for, for, for so many different reasons. Uh, number one, you know, you have to say the, the quality of the, of the work and, yes. you know, the genius of the watchmaker. Um, you know, I think it's really something that, you know, speaks to collectors. And on top of that, you know, once you're part of the FP Jean uh, owner's club, kind of, I think, you know, you, you're really hooked. Uh, because every watch is just so different than what you usually see in the market. You know, his, uh, you know, we just spoke about the, the Vagabondage, uh, the Santigraph, you know, it's things really that are, um, you know, that, 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 that are really, you know, uh, his 
uh, creations and that you you just don't see replicated anywhere so uh, and that you don't just don't necessarily see anywhere uh, and you also have of course the the, the scarcity in production uh, the fact that you know whatever happens you know or happens he's kind of limited to the number that everyone knows of 1000 pieces a year yeah. so you know there, there is uh, not a lot of occasions for people to acquire a special wristwatch not at all and then uh, I think also, you know, he, 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 he's creative and he never stopped, you know, even in current production, you know, we have, we saw the FCC. It's insane. Absolutely incredible yes. watch. You know, we, we saw, you know, how surprised people were when he uh, offered it at only watch uh, and the result that it brought, you know, so I think in the end, you know, when uh, you have a lot of key ingredients that are all brought together, you know, from innovation to genius, you know, to uh, quality, scarcity, uh, you have a brand that performs extremely well, you know, in the secondary market, but also, you know, that keeps collectors really uh, just wanting to come back, you know, and uh, to discover what FP Ron has, you know, uh, reserved for, the, for them. <laughs> awesome. And, and Remy, last question, and it's going to be a controversial one, but for me, I am not a huge fan of digital assets. Okay. Right? Like, I think we've kind of all seen what happened with the NFT market over mm -hmm. the last year, year and a half. And to me, in the end, you know, okay, let me put it this way. The, the things that I find beautiful are things that have a representation to me of human capital, right? Where an object was created by a human being that only has a finite time on this planet. Mm. And he decided, I'm gonna take part of my life and I'm gonna put it into this, right? Yeah. And and even better when it's just one person creating one object, which is the case with also Paul and watches, sure. right? But in that category of beautiful objects, I would say that the watch is unique. Hmm. Why is it unique to me? Well, first of all, uh, it's the most personal object that you can own, right? It's also one of the most ethical that it only consumes the energy you give to it by wearing it or winding it. It is the most transportable because unlike your racehorse or yeah, your yacht course. or whatever, you can bring it anywhere with <laughs> yeah. you. And it's always an expression of who you are. Hmm. And the thing that I love perhaps most of it the thing that I love perhaps most of all is it's perennial. Yeah. It endures forever. These watches will never vanish from the earth. You know, and I think that that's extraordinary. For you, as the head of watches for Europe, for Christie's, what is the unique proposition that watches offer collectors? And do you feel the watch category to some degree is actually a little bit undervalued in general? Uh, well, you know, to answer your last question, um, I think, you know, the watch category has a lot of room to grow. Um, you know, and that's really what we're trying to do within Christie's is that, you know, we, we, we're trying for our watch auctions, you know, to keep reaching more and more people, more and more collectors, you know, to basically share our passions, but share also what watchmaking is about and that people realizes that the values that you just mentioned, you know, they're, they actually apply to these objects and that, you know, they are timeless works of art. I would say, Remy, you know, and, uh, you know, forgive this because I'm a simple minded man, but in my facile interpretation, like if you want like a piece of art, let's say a painting from one of the most important artists of the 20th century, mm. whether it's Mark Rothko or Jackson Pollock or Picasso or whoever, yeah. the barrier of entry or the price of entry is not in the tens of millions, but you're looking at close to hundreds of millions, right? For sure. Right? Now, in comparison, if you're talking about the greatest watchmaker of our era, of the last 200 years, of course. right? And in comparison, like the, the price of entry into one of his timepieces is relatively low from my exactly. perspective. Right? Much more affordable. <laughs> so, and you can wear it with you, you know? You That's can... it, you know? And yes. then a, a wristwatch as well, you know, it's something mechanical, something that lives, you know, as you say, um, you know, you have to wind it, you know, if it's a mechanical watch uh, on, on a very regular basis, you know, there, there's a lot of emotion yeah. that the watch gives you, yes. you know, so uh, it definitely has all the characteristic, you know, of uh, an incredible collectible object. Now, Remy, before we sign off, I got to ask you one thing. I heard a rumor <laughs> that every person that wins one of these incredible 39 lots is going to be invited to a winner's party. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Well, you know, we, we, we wanted, you know, really to uh, thank, you know, people uh, participating in our auctions, collecting FP Jorn, but also we wanted people, you know, to feel really the sense of the, the community of collectors. And uh, in the end, we were doing um, Only Watch with, uh, where we're, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in next November, where, you know, uh, it will be an incredible moment where the entire watch community is you know, gathering in Geneva, all collectors or vintage or modern, you know, or 
looking at the auction and um, you know we, we thought it would be the right time to before you know uh, oh, the auction nice. yeah. have the opportunity to you know reunite uh, everyone that's fantastic so you are a community builder as well <laughs> I well, love it you know. well, Remy I want to congratulate you on this incredible initiative um, this championing of Fonso Paul Jorn this championing of independent watchmaking you're a great guy and thank I can't wait much. to be there with you on <laughs> yeah, the day of, of the auction on May 12th exactly thank, thank you, you Wade. thank Pleasure. you so much Cheers, guys